All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest ALT in ALTA Insights webinar. I've said that probably 100 times, and I always stumble on it. Uh, I'm Jeremy Yoey, ALTA's Vice President of Communications, and uh, today we, we have a, a real fascinating pre presentation, um, less of a presentation and, and more of a, a panel discussion um, to, to dig into the, the pros and cons of uh, some of the powerful uh, tech options that are available today. Uh, we're going to dig into artificial intelligence, robotic process automation, which will probably shorten for RPA, for uh, you know, less of those tech savvy people like me. I, I was like, what is RPA? And uh, we definitely had a lot of interest in, uh, in today's webinar. We had nearly 800 people register. So thank you for taking some time and uh, digging into uh, technology that's out there. Um, always like to remind people that the webinar is being recorded. You'll get an email uh, with a link to the recording tomorrow, and you can always access all of our webinar recordings at alta.org forward slash webinars. Um, if at any time uh, you have a question, sub submit them in the questions box. We'll hold some time for, for Q&A at the end of the presentation, or if um, I'm, at, I'm paying attention and, and I see it's uh, relevant to the, to the conversation, I'll try and interject it right then and there. Um, today's webinar, uh, we, we are offering CE and CLA credit for many states. Um, your credit's only available if you're attending the live presentation. And um, I'm, I have to tell you that our platform tracks attendance. So there's that. Uh, to meet state of compliance, uh, we'll have some poll questions during the webinar monitoring attendance. So uh, no multitasking out there. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll post a, a link to provide information needed for us to report your CE, CLE credits. Um, we do have a new process for reporting credits. Uh, with the link, you'll need to log into the Alta website. And once you're log, logged in, if uh, it applies to you, you'll need to add or update your national producer number and credentials in the states you're requesting the credits. Um, and then after that, ooh, this is lengthy, check the attendance certification checkbox and click request credits. So hopefully all that goes seamless. Our, uh, our, our bots are, are waiting for your information. Uh, if you have any questions about that, send an email to education at alta.org. All right, Ooh. I, I need to thank RamQuest for sponsoring today's webinar. And uh, before introducing uh, today's speakers, we have a short message from, from RamQuest. If it loads, there we go. When it comes to title and settlement production, all solutions are not created equal. That's why RamQuest is tailored to fit your unique business needs. With RamQuest's configurable workflow, you can automate repetitive, time-consuming tasks to process higher volumes of transactions as you optimize your operational efficiencies so you can do more business. Our secure, modern features improve communication, communication while providing, while maximum, providing flexibility. maximum flexibility. And, and RamQuest equips, equips you with advanced tools advanced that not only boost not productivity, only productivity, but also accelerate but also accelerate your production work. Plus, you can personalize your workflow to suit individual user preferences. With RamQuest's production solution, you'll experience unparalleled capabilities that can empower business growth like never before. Okay, I felt like I had a little bit of double audio there. I don't know, the rest of the speakers, did you hear that as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let me move the... Uh... All your, all your beautiful heads. There we go. So, all right, we got that taken care of. Brand Quest, thank you uh, for for that uh, that short message. Uh, definitely on point as we're going to be talking about how technology can can make your operation more efficient. And uh, with that, uh, let me introduce today's speakers. Join us. We have Brett Beckett. Brett is the Vice President of Finance and Strategy for Texas-based Independence Title. Uh, hello, Brett, and thank you, thank you for being here. You are uh, the agent on record here for us, so uh, people are going to definitely be, be interested in your perspective. Um, next, we have Jimmy Lewis. Jimmy is CEO and co-founder of True Focus Automation. Uh, True Focus provides uh, RPA technology to the title and mortgage industries. How are you doing, Jimmy? Fine, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Also joining us is Hoyt Mann. Hoyt is president and co-founder of Alana.ai, 
and Alana Parai provides a conversational AI-powered virtual assistant to the industry. Uh, thanks for joining us, Hoyt. And thank you. Super excited to be here. And rounding our, our rounding out our panel is Kevin Nitzelhelser. Uh, I, I don't know if I said that correct. Mm -hmm. it, Kevin. Kevin is uh, Chief Operating Officer for Premier One. Uh, Premier One provides tech support and IT solutions to the title and settlement industry. And uh, so thank you everyone for taking some time to share your knowledge on, on, in the tech space. And uh, we'll, we'll get into the Q&A. And, and just as a reminder, if anyone has a question, you know, while we're on a, on a topic, uh, submit it in the questions box. Um, yeah, technology, it's, it's kind of a, a, a general term. A lot of things we, we could uh, focus in on and probably hold, hold an all day session on technology. Uh, Kevin, I know Premier One, you guys held a, a conference last fall, winter in November, I believe, that, that really talked in, about a lot of the topics we're gonna talk about now. Um, the pandemic really accelerated the do adoption of technology across all industries. And our uh, title space, really no exception. And you know, we're seeing title companies implementing technology, digital, digital tools, automation um, to drive efficiency, improve customer service, and, and reduce costs. Um, and, and, and embracing the technology not only helps agencies you know, survive this, this current market downturn, but down the road, position them for long-term success. So, so gentlemen, um, you know, Hoyt and Kevin, if you guys want to, you know, start us off. When it comes to applying new technology, you know, where should a title agent start? So, Jeremy, I'll I'll take this one. Um, thanks, uh, thanks for teeing that up. Uh, you know, this is a question, and I'm sure Kevin, you get to ask this as well. It's like, where do we start? And you know, to me, always the question is, where do you want to end as far as from a success point? Uh, you have to evaluate your processes, understand where you're spending time and effort, and understand the value that reducing some of that time and effort can, can actually benefit the company itself. And so if you don't understand your processes, you don't understand where you're spending that time, then there's no real understanding of success once you one, select a technology, then two, implement that technology, and at the end of that process, understand, did you solve or did you reduce um, some of those efforts that you were looking to uh, when you started the process? And it's really an iterative approach. Um, we have a have one uh, one customer that went through and did, uh, did that evaluation and understood their call volume, and then at the end of the process, understood once they've implemented technologies, um, you know, like ours, they were able to save upwards of 40% of their time. If they didn't know where they were at the beginning, they wouldn't understand where they were at um, after they've implemented technologies. And so we use that case example to, um, to others that you have to understand the process to ultimately understand where your benefits are and have an iterative approach to that. Um, Kevin, what, what do you see? Yeah, I think I would just second that. Start with the objective, right? So uh, you don't implement technology for the sake of technology. You implement it to solve a problem, whether that's uh, efficiency or security or um, or growth. Uh, there, you can have many objectives. So, so that's uh, I say, you know, start by asking the right question. Uh, not what technology you need today, but what technology will you need in six to twelve months? Um, and and that's that's really a part of the criteria for evaluating um, what do you need, when do you need it, what are your needs to begin with. So, um, and the other thing I'd say is, uh, you know, take opportunities like this to lean on uh, other people around you, your peers, uh, professionals inside and outside of the industry um, to help you forecast and understand uh, maybe what gaps you have. So what kind of recommendations do you have for a title company on assessing those needs? Do you, do you just start a Word document, an Excel file, and just start you know, filling out the rows of you know, what you have and what your wish list is and where you want to be in five years? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you have to look at, um, you know, forecast the industry you're in, the business that you're in, um, and understand what the needs are going to be. Uh, always ask, what do the people want, whether that be your employees or the consumer or your clients, right? 
uh, understand what they're going to want, and then find solutions to to match that objective. So, you know, I, I think we're going to talk a bit today about uh, new AI uh, technologies and and how that applies to this industry. Um, technology is an arms race, right? So uh, those those who uh, adopt it uh, the quickest get get the most benefit from it. And um, and so you have you have to just understand uh, what's coming and start to look for those solutions before uh, before they're already deployed everywhere else. That's where you get the most benefit. And I think sometimes there's a curveball out there, and we'll talk about ChatGPT. I didn't know anything about it, and then, and then it comes out in November, and all of a sudden that's that's the crazy everyone's talking about. Us. But but we'll get to that to that later. And uh, you know, Kevin, you mentioned that there. It's an arms race. There's a lot of technologies that are out there to improve efficiencies, you know, reduce risk and, and cost. But there are other benefits as, as well. Um, Jim, Jimmy, can you talk a little bit uh, what role does effective technology play in uh, retain, re, retaining employees and recruiting? Yeah, sure. I, I've got a few points that I've listed out here, so I'll just go through. Uh... I do know your question uh, really didn't focus on efficiency, but first and foremost, uh, you know, leveraging AI, automation of any sort, blockchain, whatever it may be, uh, can help make your team more efficient without uh, adding additional resources or outsourcing the solution to someone else, a third party. Uh, and people may or may not realize, but, you know, your team is comfortable working with each other and you never know how the team dynamic will change when you hire someone new, just because you're in a crunch or bringing in a contract or a temporary worker. And, you know, I think one of the best bets to maybe just kind of avoid that is, you know, focus on keeping your core staff, look at uh, potential technologies that will allow you to grow without having to increase your, your core staff. Uh, and, you know, it prevents work overload, stress, burnout, and potentially those, those people, you know, leaving your company are looking for a different opportunity. So an example would be, uh, you get a new client you want the revenue you know you want the new client or you want you did a bulk project uh but you're kind of stuck uh determining you know you know do i take this revenue at the risk of you know upsetting my staff because they got to work weekends and long hours uh so you know leveraging some of these new technologies will allow you to kind of avoid those those particular scenarios uh second would be uh, skill enhancement and career advancement so you may have folks on your team, once you do announce, hey, we're going to look at a new potential technology to make us a little more efficient and accurate, uh, you may have, I'm just going to throw this out, like a gamer on your staff who could be an in-house developer that you don't know about. Uh, that's a possibility. Or maybe someone's really good at using this generative AI that we're probably going to talk about, chat GPT. They could be an excellent prompter and help you determine how to best extract information from your, your documents and, and streamline the process. So. Um, I think when you start exposing your team to the new technology, you'll probably be surprised at who's interested and, and who could potentially, you know, be uh, someone in a house that you may not be aware of, has some additional skills other than data entry or examination or closing or sales. You never know. Uh, third, I would say is uh, increased collaboration and teamwork. Uh, I do know that, you know, if someone goes out, it's not their fault. They go out ill. They're on a two-week vacation. You know, they take extended lunch breaks and then, the process gets held up because someone, you know, up downstream is waiting for like them to task to the next step. With, with automation or the new tools that are out there right now, you don't have to worry about those particular scenarios. Uh, so that should tend to, you know, build up team camaraderie. And in addition to that, um, some teams may be responsible for managing rework. Uh, if a, the team in front of them uh, is not as, I guess, uh, paying attention to what they're doing as closely as they should be, uh, the team downstream is frustrated and with their teammate or someone else and, uh, you know, using automation and tools like that definitely uh, offer more accuracy uh, and more efficiency. So, and then the last uh, but not least would be, I would say, attracting more tech-savvy talent. Uh, I see websites all the time, whether it's a title company or a vendor, which is a vendor partner, uh, and everyone says, hey, we have automation, AI, we're leveraging this. Uh, so obviously they're saying that for a reason. They think that makes them more attractive to the customer the, or, or to employees. Uh, and so I think not only, you know, are you going to be able to attract, you know, more talent and bring in more like, you know, uh, the newest and latest great technology, but potentially if you're looking to increase the valuation of your title company, title agency, 
if you've leveraged uh, the technology the way that you know could be optimally, uh, it could potentially help your evaluation in the long run uh, because it could hurt you in the long, in the near term. Near term, if that company who's looking to acquire you is saying, "Hey, uh, we have to make an investment in technology to get you up to speed because you're out there." So. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, Brett, how, from the agent perspective, you know, how, how are you seeing the, the, the positives of technology impacting your staffing? Are, are you ha hiring gamers these days? <laughs> yeah, we, we run Tidal with a PS5 controller now. You didn't know that. Nice. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, obviously, you know, technology and, and we're here talking about AI today improves efficiencies, mitigates risks, and reduce costs. Those are the three obvious points. And so trying to focus on some of the, the less obvious points here that, that we consider, um, just two things that, that come to mind uh, for recruitment and retention. And so first, as an analogy, imagine you're an auto mechanic looking for a job and you're interview at two shops. And the first shop shows you a bucket of rusted tools. And the second company has organized drawers of, of new shiny Snap-on branded tools. Which, which company are you going to be drawn more towards? And along that same analogy, if you're a customer and you're dropping your car off somewhere and you saw the same thing, which shop are you going to take your car to? And I believe that implementing new technology enables our skilled workers uh, to not only have more redundancy, more productivity, but it also leads to better job satisfaction and the company's image, which indirectly contributes to employee retention and customer retention. Uh, and so it's just really giving giving better tools to our already skilled people. And then second, uh, in a world where there's no college degree for title and escrow, as an industry, we spend countless hours training. And where as a new person to the industry, most of your training is gonna happen by exposure, meaning the only way to train for an issue is to you know experience it. And so if you are, for example, uh, examining a, a property where there's a overlapping boundary line and the neighboring property has a federal tax lien. Uh, what do you do? Well, your only way to, to learn what to do in that case is to kind of experience that instance. And if you only are exposed to that once or, you know, once every year or two, then uh, it can be difficult to expect some of our new people to know exactly what to do each time. So one of the ways that we can leverage technology is to enable new team members by being able to walk them through the common scenarios and leave the more subjective matters to be focused on by the experts. Um, so there's definitely two other points uh, that uh, it, it helps with. That's really interesting because when I when I start when we started putting putting the presentation together for me my mind for you know positives of technology just goes to the process. It does, and it's. I don't think about how it impacts your your current staffing, and could help you know give you a roadmap for where you may go down the road for for future hires. So interesting perspective, and and so hopefully you know people can distill some of that some of what what you all just said, and, and, and can think about you know the hiring and your employees you know currently and, and down the road. Um, let's dig let's dig into some of the the tech buckets that are are available to title agents now um look like we looks like we've dropped we've lost jimmy so hopefully he, he can bop back in um let's let's touch on um let's see let's there are a couple that we we're going to focus on today um and that's artificial intelligence and and then jimmy was going to talk about rpa but uh, hoyt could, could you help everyone understand what ai is and, and then Jim, hopefully jimmy can jump in and, and offer you know some some content about rpa Absolutely. I, you know, I was giving a presentation uh, not too long ago, and we, we spent spent some time talking about what is AI. And I love the topic. I get super excited about it because AI is just, is, it's huge. I mean, there's so many different areas of AI. Um, you know, we talk about generative AI, which is which is the, the, the most exciting part of what we've mentioned probably 10 times already here on the webinar, the, the chat GPT, that generative AI component, but there's also different other types of AI. There's the, the natural language processing uh, AI, and, and there's also uh, other uh, doc, doc recognition, data extraction type AI. And there's providers in the marketplace for each of these types of AI. And again, as you dig into it, you realize, and I, you know, I love Brett's analogy of the auto shop, because you know, it, it really is. AI is all these different tools and they're all shiny and they're all new and they're all exciting. It's like, oh, let's take advantage of all of them. 
But truly, when you look at a toolbox, there are different tools for different jobs, and you really need to have that right tool for the right job. And that's where, when you are looking into AI as a whole, you have to realize what problem are you trying to solve. So Kevin you know, nailed that, which is understanding your problem. And we talked about measuring what success looks like, but it's what tool do you need to use? And so as we talked about these different types of, of AI technologies, um, again, they're, they're all used in different ways. And, um, and truly, once you pick an AI technology to adopt, it's the next step is understanding how does it fit into your, your, your team? How does it fit into your workplace? And I love the concept of AI as your next newest employee because you really have to look at it like you're going to be training it. You got to you got to monitor it. You got to you got to give it some some help to get better day in and day out. And um as that maturing happens, you ultimately can uh, can have that 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 rock star that we can all think about in our in our companies that are people that brand new came into the industry and now, you know, you wouldn't want to run a business without these people. Yeah, hey, and I'll I'll just kind of second that. I think that uh, we focus so much on tools in in technology, right? It's it's often you start with the tool and then work your way back, but um, but it's also important to understand how to use the tool, right? And and so it doesn't matter if you have a ten thousand dollar tool in that toolbox if you never get it out, or if you get it out and you don't know how to plug it in, right? And so um, so I think part of the especially with these newer uh, technologies coming out, uh, we, we have to also learn how are we going to use them? How are we going to apply them? Um, and I think that's an iterative, iterative process too. Um, once you start using the tool, then you realize uh, some of the values of it. All right, thanks, Kevin. Now, it looks like we got Jimmy back, internet issues. Yeah. I've never, right. had, never had any of those doing webinars over the years. So. You have all the fanciest tech in the world, but if you don't have a solid internet connection, that's a problem. Uh, Jimmy, while, while you dropped, uh, Hoyt uh, and Kevin were talking a little bit about AI. Uh -huh. and, um, could you get, could you let the audience know about hear about RPA and how it differs differs from AI? And then we're going to talk about had a question about some specific. Uh, Areas where AI can be applied. So, you know, if you could talk a little bit about a little bit about sure. RPA first. Yeah. So RPA is really uh, a software technology that's used to um, automate manual, repetitive, uh, error-prone kind of uh, mature, really mature processes that have like rules-based uh, uh, decisions. And then the AI is definitely more intelligent. It thinks like a human. It acts like a human makes decisions. So RPA, uh, sometimes I call it like a, you know a less intelligent uh, AI tool, uh, but it absolutely does exactly what you tell it to do every time. So uh, if there is a problem where you document the workflow and say the, there's a change to the platform or the website that the bot is surfing to get other information on, uh, it's definitely gonna need to be upgraded or enhanced uh, with those changes. So that's one of the things that the AI has an advantage. Uh, RPA is just kind of like a subset of AI, but you, there are a lot of uh, opportunities to leverage AI machine learning with RPA to make it a little bit more intelligent. So, so Jimmy, where are you seeing title companies utilize RPA? Well, primarily uh, in things that are really like data entry heavy, uh, monotonous, tedious, prone to typos and errors or people will get distracted. So for instance, order creation, uh, that's one of the things that a lot of folks jump on initially because uh, sometimes they're using multiple platforms, whether it's an acquisition and now you've got two or three different title production systems and you want to really work in one. Well, that information has to get from one into the other. Well, build a bot to automate that instead of having an employee spend 10, 15, 20 minutes to do that. So, um, or you uh, acquired a, another, or say your client is using a different platform. I'm not going to throw any names out, but there's one in particular that clients are using or their client agents clients are using but they don't use themselves and they need that imported so that's one of the first uh you know uh, processes that people typically look at like i said it you just multiply how many orders are you opening today times the number of minutes and you can see how it adds up over the month over the over the year and put a dollar amount to that and see what you're saving a title search uh, we know that there are plenty of title search platforms out there right now that have automated searching uh, but in some cases people have their own title plan they have a county site that they built 
uh, they want it to be automated. Or uh, there is a like a, a commercial, you know, title plan outside of the, the two big ones, uh, and folks want to automate the workflow there. That's most definitely something that can be automated. And you know, just for instance, in Georgia, we know that clients are spending about an hour or so, maybe an hour and ten minutes doing a two warrant search. Half of that work can be automated uh, with with RPA. So that uh, updates. Uh, 80, 90 percent of an update or gap or a date down search depends upon the part of the, the country you're in. That's what it's called. Uh, 80, 90 percent of those, you know, you go back to the prior effective date, they don't need to be touched. I mean, there's there's nothing new found, no new postings. And the ones that do have postings, yes, send that back to your exam team and let them spend 10 percent of their day or 15 percent of the day instead of, you know, 100 percent of the day uh, managing these. You know, they are critical, but I'm just saying they're not an initial title search. It's just an update to a search. <laughs> I have several other, I mean, tax search. Um, we're looking at some maybe uh, automating like hyperlinking, uh, some compliance and reconciliation, anything in the title and escrow workflow. If you see someone sitting there with two and three monitors, which you see in most shops, why are they doing that? They're doing that because they want to be more efficient uh, and they got to look at multiple screens. Those are the things you should be looking at for RPA or automation or AI of some sort to come in uh, and automate that and make your team more efficient. Jimmy, I have two screens. Am I not being efficient? <laughs> well, okay, not in every scenario, but in some in those production scenarios, you, you know what I'm saying. So, yeah. so, so definitely being applied to a lot of uh, back end, behind the scenes stuff to get the transaction across the finish right. line. Yeah. Uh, Point like oh, yeah, yeah. where, where are you seeing AI being applied in the industry? Is it more uh, consumer facing, customer facing processes? Yeah, so from our perspective, we that's exactly where we see it is that um, we're we're in an always on, always connected kind of world, and we did, we had talked a little bit about employee burnout and some other concepts along those lines. Um, we're seeing that that you know what so sometimes that information is available; it just takes a human to get it. And as as Jimmy's talking about, those are opportunities that if you're able to understand what's being requested and you have access to the information then you're able to get that 24-7. Uh, and so there's a, we're seeing a tremendous amount of leverage along those lines. It's, um, you know, I, part, of, part of something that I like to talk about is the concept of there's always, we're surrounded by AI and we've been surrounded by AI for a decade plus. And it's just now that we're actually leveraging it in a way to make us more productive. And, but we've been doing it for years and we use Alexa and we use Siri and, and we tell them to do stuff and they're our own personal assistants. Why would we not have a you know, personal assistant that's always on so we can go on vacation or we don't have to be next to our phone you know, all weekend you know, waiting for somebody to uh, get us back some information or we wanna elevate our customer service so we wanna always be there for the, to give that answer. So applying technology to again, have your own personal assistant to make you uh, a little bit more uh, uh, freed up to do the things that you want to do and go uh, go be human and let robots take care of uh, this uh, this other stuff for us so I, I feel like that you know we're we've slid into this mode that we're becoming robots you know where our communications are increasing year in year out and uh, and we're almost slaves to this technology that we've in, entered into our life and um, and now it's time to leverage the technology to become more human and uh, and again let these uh, let these bots take care of uh, some busy work for us and uh, stay up all night and um, and all and work all the weekends where we don't have to. Well, that'd be wonderful. Um, <laughs> let, let's dig in a little bit about the uh, talking about a little bit about the uh, like a, a the super bot, you know, Chat GPT. You know, it's really kind of consumed conversations. And uh, I, I have a poll question I got to throw out here real quick to make sure everyone's paying attention. And uh, just to see if anyone um, has experimented with ChatGPT, maybe you've never heard of it. Um, Kevin, while people are uh, taking the poll question, you know, before we talk about impact, could you just give us a little short summary of what ChatGPT is, or maybe you just launch chat gpt online and you ask what is chat gpt and it tells you what it is yeah i mean that's that's probably the first stop right so um i think chat gpt is is one of you know thousands of new products coming out in in the um 
area of this new generation of, of AI, especially around generative AI, machine learning, large language models. Um, these are a lot of terms that are that are used around it. But um, you know, the, the the practical way that I try to um, you know explain this is imagine that uh, you suddenly have access to be able to speak with the smartest person who ever existed, right? Someone who has uh, read all of the history books, taken all of the college classes, um, read all of the encyclopedia content, and and then can instantly recall any of that information if you ask that person a question. Um, that in in model is is what ChatGPT accomplishes, and it does it in a way that is accessible to really anyone in the world. So the meteoric rise in in users um, is really what made a splash in in the news because uh, suddenly AI this this uh, new form of AI could be put in the hands of anyone and and used um, and that's the power of it too. Yeah, uh, Brett and Hoyt, if you want to jump in here and, and and talk about from your perspective, you know what impact will will ChatGPT and, and some other new AI based technologies have on a title company or the title industry as a whole? Uh, Hoyt, would you like me to start? I was going to say let you know let you uh, let you uh, take, sure. take a crack at that, and I'll I'll jump in afterwards. Yeah. In in you know we've a lot of people I've watched this webinar have been in the the industry long enough to remember you know only only ten years ago fifteen years ago, um, and and then even before that when we were putting carbon paper behind a HUD one and, and typing it out to make a copy of it right it was very manual effort and we were still experts at our industry and we knew what we did but we were spending so much time making manual carbon copies because that's what we had to do to get the job done and then all of a sudden we had copy machines and that part got a lot faster and enabled us to be even better right and and so throughout time um, we have continued to implement new technology to make to enable us to be more productive we're com constantly coming back to this framework that um all this technology is doing is is another tool to enable us. And I think that the impact that it's going to have is going to be great. Um, and it's going to be a, another kind of revolution in the industry where we talk about a lot of this more busy styled work that we're doing can be offloaded to RPA, to generative AI. And, uh, and that allows us to focus on being experts in what we do. So referring back to my previous answer, just reiterating that I don't think AI is in a place today to replace human judgment and expertise, especially in complex matters. I do think that AI-based technologies like GPT-4 have the potential to significantly transform the industry. Um, they can automate routine tasks. We've already talked about document review, data entry, which is going to improve efficiency and accuracy. Um, and they can assist customer service through AI chatbots, right? And those AI chatbots can be trained in the flavor of how you communicate with your customers. Um, but again, this is just an enabling tool that, that provides more resources to our team members. Um, at the end of the day, we sell trust. That's it. That's all we sell. That's the, that's our product. I've always said it's not, you know, title insurance is one thing. Most people don't even know what that is. We sell trust. We know we sell the fact that when you bring your transaction to us, you trust that it's going to get done right. We're going to do the examination right. That we're going to get through the you know the funding right, and that at the end of it, there's not going to be any issues, and you trust that we're going to take care of you. And in the market today, that requires a relationship. And so we're in the industry of relationships. And I don't think that we're going to be able to any, you know, completely AI based title company is going to succeed because it's not going to be able to sell trust and be able to have that relationship building. So again, um, it's going to change the way that the title company operations look, but there's new technologies of, you know, throughout all of time that have continued to change the way that title company operations look. Uh, so we're still going to be doing the same thing that we do every day. We're just, uh, you know, we're going to be able to be allowed to focus more on the on the expertise matters uh, rather than some of the business. I, I agree. And and when it comes to Chat GPT, you know, we just I, I love it for the sake that it's it's infected everybody with this AI bug. You know, everybody wants to talk about AI now. You know, it's it's again super exciting. And as Kevin was mentioning, you know, it's 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 a it's a savant. Um, of sorts that it's it, it has all this knowledge and it's just you know I come back to my analogy of of having an assistant you know it, it's it's an assistant that literally knows everything for the most part I mean you can ask it pretty much 
wherever you want. And so this challenge we have is how does it apply to our business? And, and it's affecting everybody's business. And I love the title of our webinar, The Pros and Cons of Technology, because the con of this, if you start focusing, you start realizing that, that all of a sudden you're gonna run into some, some privacy issues. All of a sudden you're gonna run into some security issues. All of a sudden you, you're exposing some internal type of, of, um, of content that, that's happening inside of your business if you leverage this tool in a way that's kind of unwieldy, if you're, you're copying emails or taking, taking meeting transcripts and pumping it into these public tools that there is no agreement of data privacy between you and your, your company, this, this opens up just Pandora's box. I mean, you have now just, again, just invited anyone and everyone into your office for every internal communication or meeting that you had with a client, and now you're, you're really at risk. So there's that risk reward benefit. And to me, the risk of a chat GPT unmanaged, un, you know, from a, re, you know, I hate to say the R word, the unregulated um, that, uh, that it is, but, it, but yet that's kind of where we're at that doorstep. I mean, we're in the AI revolution and, and this, is, um, this is a super powerful tool. Um, so say, saying all that, um, you can gain a lot of benefits uh, from a chat GPT type tool, but you have to be well educated on the risks and those risks are real and uh, people should be thinking about you know, th those areas. I know again, Kevin, I, you know, I, I'd love to hear from your side on the security aspect. I know you guys are experts in security and uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say on, uh, on that because that to me is, is one of the number one things that I think about on a day-to-day -day basis for our company and our customers and security, something we talk about often and uh, something we take super serious. And so I look at these other tools, I'm just, it just makes me a, a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm a yeah. conservative guy though. <laughs> yeah, no, rapid uh, development and adoption of technology increases risk, right? And, um, and so, I, you know, I think Brett made a really good point uh, that that we are in the pro we're in the business of trust. So the question is, how can we harness these new technologies to generate trust, to create more trust? Um, and and certainly, you know, if you're using these technologies to be available 24/7 to people in a transaction, and they ask a question, and you answer it immediately. That creates some trust points, right? Um, I think there are also a lot of applications on the back end of the transaction. You know, um, uh, generative, uh, these large language models are excellent at error checking, right? If, if you say, you know, here's a document that I have, tell me, tell me where the errors are in it. Um, you can do that uh, far more efficiently um, and accurately than humans in some cases. Um, you can use them for marketing. Uh, you can use them for creative work. You don't have to be an expert at uh, Adobe Creative Suite anymore to do Adobe Photoshop stuff. Like it, you can just do it by telling it what to do. Um, but, you know, on the security front, um, it's it's critical that, that you adopt things that make sense, but also have those guardrails up, not just for yourself, but for your employees. Um, and, and I think the best thing you can do right now is start to, uh, start to adopt some of these uh, and test them, but also train for them. Help, help your employees understand how this is going to apply to your business um, before they figure it out on their own without you, because uh, that's really where the risk comes in, I think. Yeah, let, let's, uh, let's spend a little bit more time about the risk, and we'll, we'll talk, uh, focus on some of the cons on this side, and then, then I'd like to wrap up on a feeling good. We'll, we'll get back about, about the conversation a little bit more about automation and, and how that can, can help, um, help everyone on the call. Um, Kevin, could you talk a little bit more about how, you know, the impact, we've talked about the impact on business and, and, and yeah, I played around with, with ChatGPT, you know, some questions of explain the benefits of title insurance, you know, and it, and it can pull, pull in, you know, the summary really quickly. And then, you know, if you're a title agent, you're doing that and then you can tailor, you, you can take that concept, but the importance is you need to then tailor it to you, to your business and make it relevant to your customers. It's a good starting point. It's not an end point. Um, so as Kevin said, great, great uh, option to create marketing material, but the pitfalls, the downside, you know, Kevin, 
how could chat GPT or other, other AI be used against us in, 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 in fraud and cybercrime? Yeah, I, I think um, it's important to understand that um, every use case that we have for this technology that, that we say, hey, this can help our business, this can help move, move us forward, um, criminals are using these tools for the exact same purpose. So they're asking the same questions. How can we be more efficient in our attacks? How can we create better attacks that have a higher click rate? Um, how can we steal more money using uh, AI technologies, right? So, um, so there are probably webinars going on like this uh, with, with criminals uh, asking the same questions. And so, you know, I, uh, my, my view on that is, first of all, to understand that um, avoiding the technology is not the answer. Um, we must adopt it because, uh, because you know, the, the people on the other side of the transaction will. Um, and so, so, you know, understanding the iterative process, right? Uh, what you are doing for IT security 12 months ago does not apply to today. What you're doing six, ago, six months ago may not apply to today. And so um, I, I think the process is important of, of considering and reconsidering on a regular basis. What are we doing in terms of IT security to make sure that uh, our transactions are secure, our systems are secure, and ultimately the consumers that we are serving are secure. Um, and, and some of that comes down to tools. Uh, and and as, these, as these technologies develop, you might have to change tools more often, um, or you might have to select tools that are uh, iterative, that are changing consistently with the new technology. And that's um, one of my recommendations is, is to, uh, to make sure that it's part of your criteria. When you're looking at technology or changing your technology, make sure you're doing it in a way that, that helps future-proof you. Um, you know, and I think a, a less technology-related uh, challenge of, of adoption here um, is you know, the industry and the folks who work in it are concerned about job loss, right? When you talk automation, the first thing they think is, well, I'm going to lose my job. The, the computer is going to do my job for me. And, um, and what I like to say to that is this, this technology, like Brett said, this technology is not replacing people. However, it is going to replace the people who don't embrace it with those who do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going to see the, the people who understand how to use these technologies um, are going to be able to come into your company and be 10 times more efficient than those who have, have not learned it. And so that's a critical, this is a critical juncture, I think, for those who are working in the industry um, to stay relevant. So um, in this AI realm, is, is it, it's possible then for criminals to, to mim mimic voices? You know, right? Is, is it is call to verify? You know, that's one of the pillars of of, tr of of trying to help prevent wire fraud. If criminals are using technology to you know mimic you know my title agent or or my realtor or my consumer, you know, when we're on the phone, you know, can we still rely on that? Yeah, um, I think that we you know, the answer is we just have to continue to evolve as the market evolves. Um, I can't tell you, and I wish if you had a, a second poll you could put up there, one of the things I'd be interested in is, is you know, how many, how many people throughout history, let's say take the last 10 years, have not sent a wire because the email had bad grammar in it when they were asking us to change the wiring instructions, right? And so, you know, up until a year ago, that was, there were plenty of wires I can remember saving. We're like, that doesn't sound right. Let's look into this a little further. That's a red flag. Well, because of this technology, that red, red flag is almost eliminated. They can, and then same thing, you would get like these common threads of the exact same, I'm on a boat and I need, you know, to send my money. And you'd start to recognize, okay, well, this is the script they're using. Well, they have an infinite number of scripts now. too. And so the, the, the way that we check for red flags, um, unfortunately, was very, very reduced by this. Now, call to verify, uh, in, in my opinion, is still effective because we're not 
we're not basing that call to verify on, on the voice of the person on the other end. It's the fact that we're calling them on a number known to us. Uh, but I'm, you know, <laughs> definitely will say that we have been very, very uh, aggressive about implementing uh, some of the new technology available through the vendors in our space uh, to protect against wire fraud. In fact, I was on another panel um, not too long ago, it spent about an hour specifically talking about uh, wire fraud in our industry today and how uh, generative AI is is taking a toll on that. And I will say that there are, you know, there are new vendors today that help us combat that to a whole new level. Um, but even, I, I'm not as concerned about the voice mimicking as I am about some of the very clever emails that are grammatically correct and the style of, of the type of people that we we work with that, that can be quite convincing. So that's probably more of an issue than um, than that. But call to verify, we'll state that even in some of the new uh, wire fraud platforms available to us today, there is a rejection rate due to certain circumstances where they're not applicable out of the country or not not integrated with a bank that works with, with that, depending on which vendor you use. And call to verify is still something that we fall back on. And when it's done correctly, and you have all of those practices implemented and you're doing it well, it, it does still work. But I wouldn't, you know, I would have trouble sleeping tonight relying on it 100%. I, I like the new technology vendors that are in our industry for wire fraud. All right. Um, let's talk a little bit more about uh, in this this phase for technology and uh, in transferring funds. A lot of activity on this front. New payment rail options available in the marketplace. Enhancements to existing payment options. Um, you know, Brett, how how do you see solutions like the FedNow service, which goes live next month, you know, impacting the industry? And, and do instant payments at settlement cause you any concern? Yeah, um, this one's a double-edged sword because instant payments, like we were kind of talking about before the call, you're like, I love Venmo. I use Venmo all the time, right? Between, you know, my my friends or, or goods and services, and and you know, even saying here in Austin, almost every every bar has an eight and a half by eleven with all the bartenders' QR codes. You can send them a tip cashless, and it makes things so convenient. And so, bringing that convenience into our in industry, there is a demand for. But at the at the other side, and I think you could have a whole webinar just on this, so I'll keep it short. But um, speeding up the payment process, speeding up the settlement process, uh, definitely increases the potential for fraud. Uh, wire fraud happens today, even with all of the technology available. We know it's still one of the biggest threats to our industry. A single instance of wire fraud is enough to take a lot of shops down completely. It can be very devastating um, to to any of our of our businesses and um and i think that for a lot of cases that i've seen where wire fraud has happened uh, we've uh, been able to have full recoveries in a lot of instances due to being able to act very timely on the wire process so when those payments processes speed up more um it's going to reduce that time window of of how quickly you can react and, and and be able to recover those funds. So again, it's going to be a convenience for the industry. Um, I I expect that we'll see services like FedNow and, and real time payments utilized more for things like maybe commissions or things that are uh, maybe not not the not payoff or proceeds related, but uh, especially because some of them have some some limits on them. But um, it will it will increase the concern for um, for acting fast on fraud, it's it's. I see fraudsters being able to use that to their benefit. And one of the things I, I was confused about myself is that it, if anyone hasn't seen like the real-time payments portal, most of their what their banks are proposing, it looks just like the wire screen. It's still ABA account number. You put the pay in, and it's not necessarily validated on the receiving bank's end. And so I was a, a little bummed to to find out that we made a faster system and and didn't necessarily make it better. I think that wire fraud could be solved in many cases just by payee validation on the receiving banks and Venmo certainly does it. And uh, and I hope that now that some of those systems are in more private hands that maybe they can innovate faster and, and add that in later. Um, for now, it, it appears to be just a, a wire. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Brett mentioned uh, we could probably have a whole webinar on uh, the, the, the new payment rail options. And thank you for the plug. We, later this year, we will be holding a webinar on, on, on these options that are out there fed now. ACH real-time payments and you know the current wire system that's out there that people are using. So look at look watch for um, 
marketing for that later this summer. Um, and Brett also mentioned he's, he's he's more less concerned about voice mimicking as opposed to you know these well crafted email. Uh, and, and Kevin, I, we'd be remiss if we didn't touch on you know the ongoing threat of, of targeted email attacks and wire fraud. You know, I've seen reports that uh, criminals are using they've started distributing malicious spam emails using OneNote attachments. Uh, in addition, criminals are using rich text format file attachments and, and, and phishing emails. Uh, can you talk about how these are deployed and uh, maybe offer some tips on how agents can uh, protect themselves against these schemes? Yeah, I mean, uh, so I think it's important to, to realize that email, while it's a critical core component of your business process, is an open system, right? Um, anything can be sent to an email address. And so, uh, you know, the, the first step is to ensure that you have a number of security layers in place from the outside in. Um, there are AI technologies that are really good at uh, being able to discern fraud uh, in those. Um, and, and so, so that's using uh, modern technology for that, not technology that was built for stuff that we were seeing three years ago. Uh, I think is an important piece of the puzzle. Like you said, we've seen some recent uh, rounds on the title industry specifically around uh, attachments using like OneNote attachments or rich text files. Um, unfortunately, we still see some rich text, even though that's a, a pretty uh, dated uh, format, we still see that happening uh, or being used in some uh, legitimate cases, right? But uh, understanding that the criminals also know that and so uh, whether it's those types of, of files or, or new ones that are coming out uh, they will continue to find ways through the defenses so uh, obviously training is critical uh, but but also using uh, tools and systems that can catch things that sometimes humans don't uh, you know i think an important a uh, core component of security, whether we're talking about email or faster payments with FedNow uh, or you know what we're doing with new AI technologies, it all comes down to identity security. We learned this certainly throughout uh, you know the, the COVID years that that no longer are we in the walled garden of our, our title you know office. And so really at the end of the day, what matters is who is it being sent from? Who is it going to? Whatever the data may be, right? So it's all about identity. That's what security is today. Um, you'll hear, you know, zero trust uh, and, and terms like that, but uh, it's all about figuring out ways to verify identity. All right. Well, we went down a little bit of, of a rabbit hole of some of the cons uh, that technology poses. I want to bring it back a little bit to the positive. Uh, Hoy, Jimmy, bring you back in the discussion here and, and wrap up a little bit uh, on the discussion of automation. And, um, you know, Jimmy and Hoyt, if you could both offer some perspective of the challenges of implementing AI or RPI in, in an operation. Uh, All right. Yeah, I'll jump on in. Yeah, I, you know, I think, um, you know, when we're talking about implementing uh, AI within an organization, um, I come back to the analogy of AI is your newest employee. Um, treat it as such. Uh, when you have that new employee, you know they need that training, they need that monitoring. You know, don't think that AI is a silver bullet that's going to solve all your problems because it's not. I guarantee you it won't. Um, but what it does do is gets that 80, 90 percent of the way there, and it gives you um, gives you more time. To, uh, to focus on the things that are that are necessary. So implementing that AI um, is a it's it's a focused effort, and it takes um, it takes a little bit of a mind shift. Your your the normal uh, day in and day out of your workforce changes when you introduce a super powerful tool like AI. So um, thinking through that process, giving it time to uh, mature, and uh, again before you take those training wheels off. So that's those are those are my uh, my tips. Yeah, I would agree. I think the uh, the change management when you have the 
Uh, you bring in something new and the employees are immediately scared of it, uh, thinking it's going to take their job. And you can say all day long, this is going to make it, you more productive. But until they give it a chance and uh, see it implemented and running live, uh, you know, they're still uncomfortable with it. So you got to keep them informed as well as the IT team and, and leadership can't like think this is going to fly under the radar. So I think that's really important. And also, you know, you have to take into consideration the cost. I know we haven't really talked about that, but RPA, I like to say, can be less expensive than some of the AI tools, but it depends. If you're on the West Coast or the East Coast, your salaries are going to be different than people who are in the Midwest. So, you know, leveraging automation and AI may not be as much of a cost saver if you're, you know, pitching the same solutions to someone in my hometown, my state, Nebraska, versus someone in, say, San Francisco, you know. So you have to take that into consideration. A um, couple of points that I thought I had there. So. How about Ohio, Jimmy? Uh, I've been there, too. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have another poll question to, to uh, launch here and everyone to participate in. While, while we're doing that, you know, we're about the top of the hour. So I have one more question for, for everyone, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, we're running a title agency. Well, Brett, you know, it does work for a title agency. So, um, but for for all the panelists, if if you could pick one technology to to implement at your operation, what would it be and why? Uh, Jimmy, you had the mic last year. Why don't you come watch this? Well, I'm a little biased, but I am going to say RPA, robotic process automation, and I'm saying this because of the flexibility. I mean, you can automate processes outside of production and operations, sales and marketing, IT, HR, uh, compliance, finance, uh, legal even. And then it's only a few weeks to maybe several weeks to get a bot from like an idea into development and into the live status. And there's really not, compared to some of the other technologies, not a significant uh, upfront investment and no really major changes to uh, your current infrastructure. So those are the reasons why I say RPA. Okay, fair enough. I, I see why you picked RPA. <laughs> Hoyt, how, how about yourself? What, what what technology, if you could pick one, what would it be and why? You know, I, I'm going to be transparent as well. I'm passionate about about the problem for title companies that uh, that's existed for decades and it's communications. And so um, if there's a solution around communications, um, which I say see it as a conversational AI, I'm passionate about that. Um, I think you know, communications is a, is a key element to the success and building the trust for a title company. Trust that they are always there. They're focused on you and taking care of you. And um, and I think AI can help that uh, help that process. So again, uh, conversational AI is 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 my answer, and I think it's a I think it can have a tremendous impact on a on a title company. All right, Kevin. Yeah, I'm interested in, I think, one of the most immediate impacts that, that's coming in the short term. Um, I always say follow the money when it comes to these type of new technologies. And uh, we see incredible investment from Microsoft, which is a platform that is ubiquitous uh, in in the world, right, uh, as well as our industry. So, so uh, Microsoft is going to be building some of this generative AI into their products. Um, they call it Microsoft Copilot. So it's going to be in your Microsoft Outlook and Word and Excel and PowerPoint. Um, you know, they've got Dynamics 365, all of these things that Microsoft is just grafting this technology in, and, and that will apply to everyone that's on the Microsoft platform. So that's what I'm most excited about. Uh, I'd, I'd love for it to uh, help me with my inbox, of course. But uh, but it's just going to have a massive impact when suddenly it's available to, you know, 90% of, of the world that's using Microsoft. Mm -hmm. All right, Brett, if you could wrap it up for us, you know, what <laughs> shiny coin technology would you pick out of the hat? Oh, I'm going to pick something boring, but um, <laughs> let me give a, a quick 30 second plug for something because I've seen some of the questions that come through in the original poll with the number of people who had not tried ChatGPT yet. Uh, I would challenge you by the end of the day, you don't need to know anything about programming or coding or, or anything. You literally just go to chat.openai.com, I think. You sign in with your Google account and and you just talk to it like a human. That, that, that's it. You just talk to it like a human. And, and it usually goes through a phase where at first you're like asking it funny questions to see what it would come back with. But then eventually you can uh, you know, 
you can have it write an email for you. You can have it generate a document for you. You can ask it to imagine that it is a marketer and come up with a schedule. I had it plan my entire spring break, where what hotel we stayed in when we left for our commutes, where we made our, our reservations for restaurants and everything, and it did an amazing job. I told it to imagine it with a travel agent. It's You don't need to know much. Just log in, type something in. It doesn't even cost anything. It's really interesting just to play with. So please go do that. So that's going to give you a whole different level of understanding of what we're talking about. Um, but for a super boring thing that I'd love to implement, because there's lots of really shiny things that I can dream of, but something really actionable today is, you know, we have so many branch offices and so many uh, people that were trained differently. Now, I wish that, uh, that it could just go through our, our, our paperless files and just index and name and, and sort everything the same way so that when our central teams get in, we know how to find exactly what we're looking for. It's amazing. Uh, one of the one of the biggest time waste I see is how much time we could spend scrolling through a file looking for something because we have uh, you know, a lot of different people naming it different things. So very simple, probably uh, there's probably people that offer that solution today, but uh, you know, sometimes I, I dream about having that um, because sometimes consistency really helps with collaboration and efficiency just on its own. So I'll, I'll finish, uh, finish off with more. Yeah, to your point, Greg, yeah, the, the poll uh, results is yeah, 65% uh, have not used chat GPT or heard of it. So it it is free. Does anyone off the top of their head know the URL? I think you said it, Brett, but I don't have it memorized yet. It's chat.openai.com. You can Google, you can uh, yeah, Google it. it. It's chat.openai.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can yeah. sign in with a Google account or, or lots of other options as well. Yeah, and then results of the other poll question, you know, what's the most important thing uh, for Im implementing technology and it's increasing efficiency and streamlining processes seven, six, processes, seven six. so all right well very very fascinating uh conversation gentlemen uh for the attendees if you missed parts of today's webinar or think others in, in your office would benefit from listening uh, as i mentioned earlier a recording uh, will be emailed to you tomorrow and you can always access all of our uh, presentations at alta.org forward slash webinars. Um, did want to highlight a few of the other, a few documents available for download in the handout section. Uh, Jimmy and his team uh, produced a report that analyzes the time and resource savings using RPA. So, you know, check that out. Uh, pretty interesting report, breaks down various processes in the transaction and the associated time and cost. And then there are also um, a co couple of articles on ChatGPT, one from Hoyt that's in there, and then one uh, from myself that um, on Alta Connection, people were uh, debating the pros and cons of, of, uh, of ChatGPT. And, and just one thing of caution for that, you know, don't put any personal information in there that you don't want you know, shared. So, you know, pri as Hoyt, I, I believe Hoyt mentioned, you know, privacy, security, bias, you know, some of the, some of the top line issues that are, are risks and concerns about using using chat GPT. Um, as, a re, as a reminder, um, wait, not as a reminder, I didn't post it yet. So let me uh, post it here in the um, chat. The, if you need the link for the uh, CE, CLE reporting, that's in the chat box. Um, as a reminder, you have to log in to the Alta website. Um, once you go there, any questions on the credit, education credit, send an email to education at alta.org. Uh, I do need to thank GramQuest once again for sponsoring today's webinar. And, and with that, that will bring us to the conclusion of today's presentation. Um, gentlemen, thanks again for, for spending some time with us and, and, and sharing the, uh, your insight on the pros and cons of technology. Thanks for the invite, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. Alta. Thank you. Great discussion. Yeah, thanks Alta. All right, thank you. Take care, take care everyone.